This is Josh, welcome back. Today's video is on inequalities and more specifically graphing linear inequalities. I put four up here on the board because as we get farther into Algebra 1, you should know the basic rules. So if at any time you want to pause the video, work on a couple of these, see what you get, and then check them with my answer, it's really a great way to learn. All right, I, I don't want you just sitting there watching me do all this work by myself. Although that's kind of what I'm doing, but at the same time, I do want you to apply it to these and, and, and work ahead, right? Worst case, you make a mistake, but you're gonna learn from those mistakes. So I really do encourage you to try these ones. Let me get started with the first guy here. Um, if you've watched my videos on quick graphing or graphing linear equations, then that part you should not be struggling on. If you're looking at these not knowing how to do the graphing, go back and watch my other videos because that's gonna give you the information so you're able to just quickly graph these guys. I'm gonna draw this pretty big here. Uh, let's see here. Y is greater than, again, I'm reading the equation to myself out loud. Y is greater than one half X plus three. All right, I have my starting point and my slope. That's what I call them because I think that reminds you how to work through these guys. I have my starting point and notice I circled the positive sign with the three because they're together, it's a plus three. So when it comes to graphing this guy, I know that I'm gonna need the positive three on the y-axis, right? This is my starting point. So my starting point is positive three, one, two, three. My slope is up one over two. Up one over two, and I'm good, all right? Now, if you were just graphing this guy, okay, if this was y equals that, slope of a line, you know, y equals mx plus b, all that stuff, if it was just a linear equation, you would make it look like this. But because it's an inequality, remember when we were doing them on the number line like this and you had to like make a bubble, let's see here, let's say it was two and you had to shade in a certain direction, right? There's no way for you to really symbolize this on a line. And so the best way they came up with for doing that was just to say if it's greater than or less than, because the line itself is not part of the answer, just like here, all we can do is we can just make it a dotted line. And so that's how your line should look, okay? Your line should be dotted so that you're showing the reader that the answer is greater than or less than, but it's also not including the line, okay? But that's gonna change in the future. Let's get through this guy first. So I drew my linear equation. It's greater than or less than, so I make it a dotted line and then I need to shade, okay? Just like we shade in one direction on the line over here, if it's just a single value, now we're on a coordinate plane, we have to shade either up or down to fulfill the requirement of greater than, less than. Now, a while back, I had some students remind me that, you know what, if it's greater than, you shade up. And so you can just shade like this, or you can put arrows, every book is a little different, but you're shading greater than, okay? So going up the y-axis, you're shading greater than. Any questions on that? I hope not, okay? All we did was take our y equals mx plus b, we made it into an inequality by making it a dotted line, and then we shaded up because this is y is greater than, okay? Let's do a less than, and let's see what happens with that guy. Again, if you're working ahead, which I strongly recommend, try this guy, see what you get, and then check your work with mine. Hopefully, we will match. All right, uh, let me draw another one of these guys. Uh, y is greater than, less than, I'm sorry. Y is less than 1 half x plus three. Uh, I'll just draw a couple of these. My starting point is three, right? and my slope is one half, or my rate of change. Up one over two, got it. It's an inequality, so my line again is dotted. Okay, this time I'm gonna skip that little extra part, I'm just gonna make a dotted line. And then from there, I need to decide what side to shade. Okay, and so because it's less than, we shade down. Now don't get carried away with your shading. This is not a coloring class. I have students that shade like all the way down to here and it makes this giant mess on their page. That's not necessary, okay? Shade just a little bit so the teacher can see where you're shading. And if you want, you can even just make a couple arrows. Simple, okay? Don't get crazy with this stuff. 
So we did greater than, less than. Now there is a mathematical rule to do this as well, and I'm gonna hit that as we, after we finish these two guys right here. Because I do wanna talk about the math side of it. It isn't just, well, if it's greater than, you shade up. As nice as that sounds, that isn't exactly the math part behind it. And I wanna make sure you hear that as well. First, let's graph these two guys. Sorry, I kinda of cut through them. I guess I got a little bit, a little ambitious. Uh, let's see here, what's my starting point on that one? Awesome. And if you don't circle these, that's okay. I circle them just to remind myself so I get these things right. Negative four, one, two, three, four. Negative four is my starting point. My rate of change is two thirds, so up two over three, it's an inequality. And so I know where my line is gonna go, but just like how we were doing these on the single X axis here, you know, with a two, and we shaded then that way, okay? If X is greater than two, then we shade like that. If X is greater than or equal to two, then we shade the bubble. Well, there's no real bubbles on these guys, and so instead of making it a dotted line, you just make it a straight line. And what you're doing then is you're showing the reader that the answer can include the actual line itself. From there, greater than, less than, shade your inequality and you're, do you're done. Uh, it's greater than, greater than means you shade up, so therefore this is how it would look. Hopefully by now you're getting the hang of it. I believe you should be able to do this one by yourself. So let me erase this. And while I'm doing that, if you wanna get jumping on that guy, finish it up and then check your answer with me, that would be pretty darn sweet. All right, let's make another one here. Um, negative four is my starting point again. My rate of change is two thirds up two over one, two, three. Um, it's less than or equal to, so because it's got that equal, ooh, kind of missed that guy. <laughs> Let me change that up a little bit. Um, because it's equal to, we have a solid line because the line is part of the equation. A point on the line will actually work for this inequality. What I mean by that is kind of coming into the next part. Um, I got my, got my line less than or equal to, the equal to is done, less than, I shade down. Okay, less, less than the amount, all right? If the line was like this coming down over here, greater than would shade up like this, and less than would shade down like that, okay? So it doesn't matter how your line looks, you're still gonna be able to shade up or down, up or down. Now let me talk about the math behind all of this as well. Um, if that's all you needed to know, then I say peace out and I'll see you later. But if you do wanna hang for just another second and see some of the, the math behind it, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna prove that what we're shading is actually right. And some books ask you to do it, so it's worth knowing. Um, let's just start with this inequality right here, okay? Uh, my starting point is three. Right there, my rate of change is up one over two. It's an inequality, so I do that, okay? Oh, that one wasn't as good as my other ones, but that's okay. Uh, all right, we have this inequality here, and the way you prove it or you justify it is you pick a point on one side of the line and see what happens when you plug it into the equation. Let me write that out down here. One half x plus three. Okay, so first what you do is you pick a point. Now the, what, the thing that I always recommend is you pick the point that's the easiest to work with. And that is always gonna be the origin right here. Zero, zero. Why? Because it zeroes out. You know, anything times zero is zero. So it makes your answer really easy to read. Okay, now remember this is the X value and this is the Y value. So from here, we plug these values in, because this is a point, right? It's zero, zero, but that's okay. It's on one of the sides of the line, so it does fulfill that requirement. And now we need to plug it into the equation. What is y equal to? Zero. That guy we just keep. What is x equal to? Zero. But do you see how zero times whatever this is is gonna be a zero? It makes your problem way easier. And you end up with zero plus three, or zero is greater than three. 
Now books teach this in different, different ways. I always try to keep it really simple and read the question to myself. Is zero greater than three? No, okay? And so because it is not gonna work, zero is not greater than three, then this side down here or everything under the line is not a solution. Therefore, this side is the solution. All right? So again, we read it to ourselves and say, is zero greater than three? No. So this point here does not work. And if it doesn't work, then the other side has to work. Now you might be saying, well, Josh, let's check a point, right? Let's make sure that actually is true because otherwise you're just making stuff up for all I know. Well, let's try one. Um, again, try to pick points that are easy to use. Why would you pick some point way up here where it's like 300 and like 476, right? Those numbers will work. It's just that now you're putting big numbers into this inequality and you're gonna be doing a lot more math. Stick to what's easy because it's gonna give you less room for mistakes. At least that's what I think. Okay, so let's plug in, let's plug in a point on the, can I pick a point on the Y axis here? Of course I can, right? Any point over here is just like any point over here, or here, or anywhere. It just has to be higher than the line itself. So I'm gonna pick, was that three, four, five, six? We'll pick seven, how about that? Ordered pair zero, seven, okay? Let's plug it in, see what we get. Uh, what's the value for Y? It is a seven. Greater than, what's the value for X? Zero, right? Gotta pick the zeros. Love them zeros, because that's what I end up with. Because zero times a half is back to zero plus three. So this part I don't really need, okay? The zero plus, I mean, it's, I, I'm doing it just so that you see what I'm plugging in where, but at a certain point you can probably erase that and skip it. And say to yourself, read the inequality. Is seven greater than three? Yes, so because seven is greater than three, then this point is a solution to the inequality. And if this point is a solution, then any point above this thing is gonna be a solution. And so that's how you check your answers algebraically. Some books are gonna ask you to do that. Some books are just gonna say you shade up or shade down, but it is good for you to know some of the reasoning behind why you shade up or down and how you actually mathematically prove it. So thanks for watching. Check out my other videos and I'll see you soon.